Bison Media Zone on WDAY Extra. Welcome everybody to the Bison Media Zone. Back for another Wednesday edition of the Forums. Mike McFeely joins me. North Dakota State has homecoming this weekend as the Bison will take on Towson University. Can I still say out of the Colonial Athletic Association? I don't get shot for that, will I? You know, it's not no, coastal. Because I, right, because I still live with the Colonial. Yes. And it, it always will. So Towson, uh, this is the back end of a home and home. The Bison went to Maryland three years ago, 135 to seven. Identical score of when they won the national championship. And game. I wonder what score I predicted. Oh, you the, did that too? I think oh, we all did, did that. <laughs> I think we all did that. We couldn't uh, couldn't resist doing the 35 to 7. Seven. Well, can they allow 7? Because that's a big mm. question of the Bison defense. will lead off our show today after 270 rushing yards for East Tennessee State. Tim Polisek said yesterday in his weekly press conference, say, it's a communication thing. He doesn't believe it's a personnel deal. Mm. Although he said that there are other guys we can play at certain spots. Other spots, who we have is who we have. Yeah. And I, we're, we think that he thinks that there's other linebackers he could play. We think that he thinks there are not other safeties he could no, play. No, correct. Yep. And the defensive line, we actually thought was going to be the strength of the yes, defense. Maybe yep. the strength of the entire team, yep. aside from the quarterback and Cam Miller. But there were just so many little cutbacks. And look at that hole. Yeah, there. it's Goodness gargantuan. Yep. Um, and so whatever Trey Lamb did both in scheming and in play calling, by the way. And Tim Palsik yesterday really praised the play calling of Trey Lamb and the preparation yeah. as well. Um, they had NDSU's number. The, the part that's concerning for NDSU and for its fans is it just looked a lot like the last couple of years. And if you look at the statistics, like where North Dakota State is ranked defensively, I know the competition has gone from Big 12 to uh, Ohio, Ohio Valley. Valley and then to Southern and so we don't we'll learn more once yep. we get into the Valley season but NDSU's defensive statistics are very mediocre yep. there's nothing that stands out you can't look at them and go wow they've only allowed 25 you know rushing yards a game or they rank third in pass defense they're they're just not nope. really solid in any area and that's really what has stood out to me the last couple of years and now this year again yep. is for that long stretch, and at, at some point we're gonna have to get away from talking you know, the way it used to yeah, be was oh, back yes. in the day because yep, yep, yep. it's just not that anymore. Yep. But they always ranked in the top five in run defense. They always ranked in the top five in total defense. They always ranked in the top five in fewest points allowed, and they just haven't been doing that for the last three years. Tackling is an issue again. Yeah. And we thought that we even put to bed at the end of last season, but it, it's reared its head again. Where but, in politics that guys are reaching, but. That goes back to what you and I have talked about for a long time, which is if you don't have the speed yeah. to be in position, yeah. then you're you are going to be reaching <laughs> and then you're going to miss tackles. Yeah. And I still, my amateur eye to me says, I don't see a lot of burners on the NDSU yeah. defense. I yep. just don't see, you don't see the, again, going back to the old days, <laughs> you don't see the Christian Dudziks. More recently, James Kayser made up for a lot of things that was going on in NDSU's defense in 2021. Because he could they, speed they, around. They were yeah. good, yep. but he could track guys down, yeah. and he could make yep. plays. Yep. And that was something that Tim Palsek brought up yesterday was, we need guys to make plays. Yep. And that's another thing that stood out this year is when you watch NDSU's defense so far, and again, they, they were okay, I thought, against Colorado, except for the obvious, which right. is they gave up 500 the back passing end, yards yes. or whatever. Yep. And Tennessee State was what it was. But you... There's never a play where you go, wow, did you see that? You know, there's some guy shot out of a cannon yeah. getting into the backfield to make a play or some guy turning a, a potential 30-yard gain into a three-yard gain with a great tackle or just speed. Correct. I yeah. just haven't seen that no. so far. Now, they do have speed in one guy, and that's Jackson Williams, who Policy said yesterday, he's playing. I think that was something. He plays we, offense, though. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> But he also plays on special teams and, and the kick return ability that he's had. We've seen that in the game against Tennessee State and then last week against East Tennessee State. That has been a, a, a nice surprise, especially in a, a position where Braylon Henderson and Raja Nelson are hurt and likely not going to play this week. This guy is, has been a burst. We saw it yeah, early in fall I mean, camp. You see that uh, on that return right there. You know, he again, he breaks a tackle, first of all, but then he can run around guys and past guys. And to me, that's... Like that. Again, so, like right there. Yeah. Look at that little move, the little step inside, yep. and then just the wheels to the edge. Yep. That's 
missing from NDSU's offense, as good as it's been. And, and by the way, Tim Palsik yesterday in his presser was getting questions about, you know, what are you going to do with Cole Payton? What are you going to do here? Yeah. And he said, our offense isn't the problem. Nope. You know, we've been nope. efficient. We've been good on offense. Um, that's not the issue. But Jackson Williams brings some speed to the to the equation, yeah. and that that matters. I mean, if, if you can run past guys, if you can break a kickoff for 50 yards instead of 20 yards, it's just, again, something that we just haven't seen a nope. lot of. We saw it on the punt returns last year with Jaden Price. Remember how yes. good he was at yes. that? Yep. But special teams is an edge. Yep. It's part of the equation. And I think this young man is uh, is, is going to add something to that. They have not had a kickoff return touchdown since 2021 at Sam Houston in that weird game in May of I'm going to say it was a guy who was pretty fast yeah. that <laughs> ran that one back as well. It was Christian Watson. Because he did ran that one back yeah. against Northern Iowa. <laughs> he did also do that too. Yes. That year where we went, wow, he's yep. fast. He's all right on that. The Towson Tigers are here uh, with a record of one and two. They lost in their most recent game, scared the heck out of Villanova. They yeah. frankly should have won the football game. Yeah. They missed two field goals. We're talking with Pete Shinnick yesterday. He's the second-year head coach, taking over Rob Ambrose, who was let go after the 2022 season. Guy who won a Division II national championship. He knows full well. He's a Baltimore guy of trying to get the kind of players they need at Towson in a rebuilt CAA that's going to lose Richmond after yep. this year. They could be... If he gets their act together, they could be in the top half of this league. Yeah, and the, the kid you just saw in that first highlight, yeah. the tight end, uh, Runyon. Boy, he's a dude. Cam Runyon is uh, a dude, is six, right. Six, yep. six, something like that, 245, 250. Uh, he's he's the kind of tight end that NDSU has to have multitudes of. Yep. Uh, but, boy, what a great player. Uh, I think they're a little unsettled at the quarterback position because they had an injury from their starter the first couple of games. I'm not sure, uh, watching some of these highlights, that their second quarterback maybe isn't a better thrower. Yeah than the first quarterback that they had. But they have some offensive skill. Uh, they have some size and experience in the offensive line. And Tim Palsek made the comment yesterday again that this might be one of the better offensive lines yep. that we see, which doesn't bode well. No. Considering what we saw just from talk, East, right. East Tennessee State is not going to be one of the better offensive lines they've seen. Um, and so we'll see how yep. NSU's defensive line stacks up. But this, I, I don't want to make this into a more than I think it might be. Because it's still a team that was picked, was it tenth? I want to say I was going to say ninth out of the yeah. sixteen team CAA. So right. they're, they're so, the but, bottom but, half. But the preseason yep. is the preseason. It's yep. all based on last Correct. year. Correct. Um, but I don't know that Towson is is a is a national power. But it, they might be a little bit stiffer test than we thought, yeah. especially with some of the issues that North Dakota State apparently has on defense. They lost to Cincinnati, gave up nearly seven hundred yards Ooh. to the Bearcats. I and watched they, that game. Yeah. That was, wow, there was guys running all over, and all they, over the place. And then they beat game. Morgan State, and Morgan State's a MEAC Bad. team, so you're not gonna, you can't get much out of that. So. But well, but it was fourteen to nine. It was a closer game yeah, than maybe I mean, anybody thought. I mean, that was that's not a good showing. Yeah, so that's the uh, the game coming up here on Saturday. The other topic that we we have Mike on we can't avoid is what's going on with <laughs> with with the Mountain West and the Pac-12 and where things stand as we sit here on Wednesday morning at 10:40. It looks like Memphis and Tulane are on the on deck circle for the Pac-12. For the Pac-12, yes. So they would leave the American and go to that league. Yes. Which that's New Orleans and Memphis. Those are now, those are good markets you want to get and, into. And I, there's a great column online um, from Gary Parrish of CBS Sports. Yep. He's actually a Memphis grad, and he lays out all the reasons why that's a great move for Memphis. Yep. And, when, and he, Gary makes a great point that that does make sense. That would then open up a couple <laughs> spots in the AAC, which has shown even – I mean, Let, not, yeah, not, right. not, not that anybody's shown interest <laughs> in NDSU yet, as far as we know. Yes. I, What's less than minuscule? <laughs> well, at Conference USA, I just had a couple indications that Conference USA was at least like looked at NDSU and went, oh, NDSU, hmm, okay. You know, which is more than anybody else apparently <laughs> yes, has done. Correct. Um, but I don't know if the AAC is in play no. for North Dakota State. I think it's still going to be the, the Mountain West or Conference USA, if anything. Yeah. And, and so I don't know. Air Force apparently is headed from the Mountain West now. To, to the AAC, American. Which yep. you and I both had a source uh, in college football tell us about, what, 10 days ago that yep. he thought that was going to happen. Because yep. to be with the other service academies, Army Makes and sense. Navy. Makes sense. Navy are there. Yep. In the AAC. Um, but what comes of the Mountain West is, I think, the biggest question for North so Dakota State. So, now, if Air Force is gone, and you put this poll up, and I I'm sorry, I didn't have the results on it because you put it on Twitter Last yesterday. I saw 75-25 in favor of North Dakota State, South Dakota State, Montana, Cap. Montana State going to the Mountain West if, as I phrased it, 
if by the chance of the football gods, because there's about this much of a chance, Dom. Well, if you can see the space yeah, between yeah, our fingers, yeah. it ain't much. If that was to happen, would you be in favor of those schools uh, accepting that invitation? And 75 to 25 percent say yes. So Chris Vanini from the Athletic reporting this morning that sources familiar with discussions believe UTEP and Texas State are potential targets for the Mountain West. Sam Houston might be an option, too. There's the old Texas yeah. connection. Yep. Of course, they're brand yep. new. New Mexico State might be in the mix, but New Mexico may not want to add them into the into the Mountain West. And here's the other one that's going to – it won't knock your socks off – Tarleton. Tarleton State, another yep. one in Texas, but they've got a bunch of money. They have a ton of money. Yeah. And they are they just got Division One eligible, but they might be. And and there is outside, no mention. just outside of Dallas. Yeah. And Tarleton State is part of the Texas A&M system. Correct. And they have a bottomless pit of money, and they are going to be heavily invested in football, and it's in the state of Texas. And but let me go back to the Sam Houston thing. Yeah. So we all kind of went, Sam Houston, they can't do this, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> Conference USA, what a terrible place to be, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> but they got in the door. They're, right, they're in the party. They, they yeah. got in the door. They, they, they got into the party. Yep. They slipped the bouncer five bucks and went to the front of the line, <laughs> and they're in. So did Jacksonville State. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And so now they're in the discussion for other yeah. conference openings. And that's you what just, you and I have been yeah. saying now, not for five years, but for, for at least a couple of years. Just get in. Yep. Just get in. Get in line for the party. <laughs> and if you're a long ways away, wave the $5 bill at the bouncer and say, can I right. come to the front of the line? And that's where Sam Houston now appears to be. Because it consistently, North Dakota State's not even in the top 10 of schools being mentioned. Right. Maybe once, one article we saw that they were yeah. out there as an attractive candidate. But more often than not, we're, we're seeing seven, eight schools in front of both NDSU yeah. and SDSU being yeah. mentioned there. And yeah. the Montanas, to be and, frank. And nothing well. has changed with North Dakota no. State in terms of nope. geography. And so nope. maybe... Again, maybe you and I are all this time have just been barking up this tree that was never ever had any chance yeah. of happening. Yep. But it just seems like if you got in the door, then you, you just you have a chance then yep. to move where you because realignment's not done, and it's not no. going to be done for some time. It's there's not going to be a line where we go, okay, that's it, we're done, you know, <laughs> we're done, that's it, because that's what Missouri State tried to say was going to happen. Although right. his point was. When Missouri State got invited to, to Conference USA, was this might be the last FCS school you and see for very some time right on because that. of the five million dollar right. entry fee? I don't think the five million dollar entry fee would be an issue at all for North Dakota State, South Dakota State, or Montana State. Montana, different story, but none of that matters no. because there has to be got to get an invite. There has to be a discussion. Yeah, you got to get there, in. There has to be a phone call. Right and and. As far as we know, that has not the Mountain happened. West just isn't no. at all interested. Let's take a break. We come back off of that. We'll look at the FCS games on tap for this week. <laughs> I know. There's a couple of good ones, though, to keep yeah. an eye on. We'll talk about that. We are where the we Bison. Are. Exactly. Free the Bison and the Tigers. We're back on the BFZ. Wrap things up right after this. Welcome back, everybody, on the Bison Media Zone. Back with Mike McFeely. You look at some of the spotlight games for week four of the FCS season. North Dakota will get San Diego. We miss our old guy, Dale Lindsay, in San Diego. Yeah, San Diego's not, not as the fun. same. The Toreros are yep. not as fun, and that's going to be a route for North Dakota. Drake plays South Dakota. Now, USD did not play last week because Portland State's team came down with whooping cough. That turned into a kerfuffle. Yeah, it really U did. USD was not happy, no. but then... USD claims that they went all the way out to what well, they did. They went all the yeah. way out to Portland, but they claim that Portland wasn't maybe, up front maybe about up front it. With yeah, them. Portland came back and said, "Yes, we were." I mean, they were USD was involved in the discussion that we were about having, it. Hmm. and so that's a kerfuffle. And by the way, that, that will affect potential playoff well, and, deal and, because and, now they have one last game that USD has played. And that might be why the AD John Schemmel was getting out front of Correct. it, saying, "This is not our fault. Yeah. We didn't know." <laughs> Um, because they don't want it to hurt their – because right now, if South Dakota beats Drake, they will have one FCS victory going into the Missouri Valley Correct. Football Conference. Right. Because they played a Division Two, which that's That's their okay. prerogative I mean, to do. Whatever, yep. That's what you want to do. Yep. And then the game against Portland, which they viewed as was probably going to be a victory over a Big Correct. Sky team, yes. is now not. And then not they lost happening. to uh, Wisconsin. 
Drake, by the way, last time out, they beat Eastern Washington. Yeah. So I don't know what's going to happen. I think yeah, South Dakota think probably win, probably, handle. but just keep an eye on that. The Jackrabbits are going to Louisiana on Saturday night. Southeast Louisiana is who the Jackrabbits will play. And SDSU, Mike, for it just it looks like it's it. They are still very, very good. It just seems like things aren't clicking yet. They struggled with Augie last Saturday. Well, night. but but part of that, I mean. Um, and you can maybe blame some of North Dakota State's halting play on Saturday on this as well. If you look at the way these teams are set up, they have that opening game against an FBS school. Yep. And, that, and for North Dakota State, we know that they were looking at that game against Colorado for months. They can say what they want. They were looking at it for yep. months. South Dakota State openly was saying, we, we are going down to Stillwater to win. To win we the think football that we can game. compete yep. with these guys. Yep. So they were clearly looking at that game for a while to try to sort of put their stamp on the national scene in college football. Okay, then you go to the next game. For NDSU, it's their home opener. They, they all of those things going on. Yep. Easy game, but there, you know, a lot of emotion in those first couple of games. For South Dakota State, emotional first game. Then they actually had a pretty good opponent With, in the second game. They had the game. word. Yep. At home yep. again, so home opener. So a lot of things going on there. They were had to be up for two straight games. A lot of things going on. The third game against a D2 team, I, I'm going to gonna. gonna Take a wild guess that they probably weren't exactly locked yeah. in on Augustana. They necessarily didn't play well, and so I'll I'll give them a break a little bit. Okay. The alarming thing is that uh, Mark Gronowski again he threw a couple of yes. you know weird interceptions yep. that, that we just haven't seen out of him no. in the previous four years since he's been playing, <laughs> and so we'll see. How, they had yep. a turnover. They, they fumbled the opening kickoff and lost that. Just sort of sloppiness that we don't expect out of South Dakota State, but. I still think they're the best team in FCS. Yes. They have the most talent in FCS. They're just not as good yeah. and as sharp as they were a year ago. Maybe they don't need to be. Yeah, and, and we maybe. talked about that a lot in Fargo from 2011 to 2021 is you don't have to win every game by 40 points. Right. All you have to win is by one point. And, 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 you, and you can still be a national yes. champion if you win every game by one point. And we've... We've been down the road with Sela. They have great offensive talent. They can't play a lick of defense. No. I don't know what's changed with that team. For, Nothing. But, Southland yeah. Conference team. Right. Um, the one yep. that Polisek yesterday pointed out something interesting, though, was in the transfer portal era, you know, maybe you can't make assumptions about what teams are early in the year anymore. It, good it, point. You know, yep. I mean, you know, East Tennessee State, I think they were a little bit better than we thought yes. they were going to be. I still, yep. I'm not making, NSU should have handled yep. them more easily but than they, they were better they were better than but, i thought but they were I'll better than that. i thought yep. they had a couple of yep. players that were yeah that like well okay that the tight end can, is really that good that guy could play yep. for ndsu yes, that guy could play for ndsu yep. and so they weren't as bad as we thought they weren't a three and eight type no. team and so maybe southeast louisiana has some transfers has some guys then we maybe they'll be better than we think the other game on there is uh the battle for the wheel semo and siu that's a good game those are two yeah. ranked teams they're going to play in carbondale if siu gets that they'll have three ranked wins already because yeah. they beat yep. austin p and then last week with their win as well over the it's word, word that's yeah. pretty good yep yeah. yeah. and we we granted they're going to do it without their starting quarterback though yeah. now dj right. williams is um, out southern illinois is, is one of those programs that is a solid fcs program yep. nick hill we've praised him for yep. years now yep um with what he has to work with in Carbondale, with budgets and, and all of that. He knows how to work the portal. Yep. Not afraid to do that. But <laughs> I've got a quarterback who's pretty good from Murray State, yeah. from the team in the league. Um, they're just maybe going to have some limitations on some of the – the guys up front and things like that, but they're, they're a legit FCS program. Before we go, we mentioned it is Hall of Fame weekend and because of homecoming. Craig Ball is going to be inducted into the Bison Hall of Fame, the architect of, of the Division I dynasty. You and I have chatted about this many times, and Jeff obviously wrote the book on it. It's been 10 years since he's been back, yeah. but I think there's enough you know bridge under the water. I think you know bygones be bygones. He should get a great ovation, I would hope, on I, Saturday. You know, I don't think that there's any reason for him to not. not I, yeah. I mean... You know, I think his decision to stay out of the spotlight in Fargo the last 10 years is, I don't quite know why that is, yep. um, but he privately has come back and visited with the coaches. He has his own plane, he's his own pilot. Um, I know that a couple times during summers, um, back. you know, yep. Matt Entz would tell yep. us, well, if Craig came back yep. last week and stopped up at the offices. So <laughs> there's, you know, he, I mean, publicly he hasn't had, just doesn't want to do interviews. Yeah. Um, doesn't want to talk about his time in Fargo for again for whatever reason. I don't if he just wants to leave people alone and, and it's, you know he's moved on, but he should get a great ovation and uh, he's he's the guy that he did. If, if the phone call ever comes for NDSU to go to the Mountain West, 
Craig Bowles should get a, a round of applause as well because he built the program that would allow that to happen. Yep. Just you look back at some of those memories, Mike. We were there for those early playoff games of the Fargo Dome. There was nothing like it. Oh. Those 2011 to 2013, there was nothing like it in no, there. No, uh, when and yeah, right. I mean, that, that, that's that 2011 season when they came off the playoff game in 2010 yeah. and lost. Um, that 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 game in Eastern Washington is really what sparked was. the interest in yep. fans, and the fans went, "Oh my gosh, this yeah, is, we, we, we can do this. Yep. We, we can get to the national yep. championship game." And for the 2011-12-13 season was Oof. just remarkable. Fun stuff the, there. The, the, the Scotty Miller line of the game in 2011 when uh, NDSU, I think they beat South Dakota State down in Brookings, and the next game for the Bison was Northern yeah. Iowa in Fargo, yep. and that's the game back then that Bison fans circled, circled. because yep. they didn't like Northern Iowa, they didn't like Mark Farley, and Scotty Miller said they're going to be hanging from the rafters <laughs> in Fargo. <laughs> next week yep. and they were and they were and it was fun oh it was, it was fantastic fun. thanks so much for yeah. being here don't forget bison game day we hit the air at 10 a.m on saturday morning get you ready for the bison of the tigers note the start time we hit the air at 12 50 with kickoff just after one as towson makes its first trip to fargo since 1983 that was a division two playoff game should be a great environment we'll give you the hall of fame ceremonies all that good stuff coming up on Saturday. Thanks so much for watching the Bison Media Zone. We do it each and every Wednesday for Mike McFeely. I'm Dom Izzo. We're back next Wednesday at 1030. Have a great rest of the week, everybody. We'll see you on Saturday.